For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. DNA is a very fragile molecule. As a matter of fact, from one generation to the next, many mutations are passed on. Roughly 100 new mutations per person per generation. That is 100 typographical errors every generation that our parents did not have. Natural selection has to remove or filter out these mutations or else we will go extinct. The problem is that these nearly neutral mutations are only slightly deleterious and only slightly harmful to the point where they do not really affect reproduction. Selection cannot see these. They are essentially invisible to natural selection, which means species are going downhill and the evolutionists do not have millions of years of evolutionary advancement. The reality of genetic degeneration puts shelf lives on genomes. Selection can only see the worst, most detrimental mutations. And selection may be able to amplify your best beneficial mutations, but it can do nothing to stop these effectively neutral mutations building up in populations over time. On page 211 of the book Genetic Entropy, Dr. John Sanford points out, the genetic degeneration that Dr. Lynch is documenting cannot be halted by increasing selection intensity. This is because the mutation rate is way too high because natural selection is way too inefficient and most deleterious mutations are nearly neutral and so are immune to selection. In addition to recognizing the importance of mutations in our reproductive cells, Dr. Lynch points out that mutations in the rest of our body are rapidly building up causing aging. By the time we are 60, we have tens of thousands of new mutations per cell. This is what limits our life expectancy and no medical breakthrough can be expected to halt continuous mutation accumulation in virtually every cell of our body. In a paper titled, The Distribution of Fitness Effects of New Mutations, it is pointed out that it seems highly unlikely that any mutation is truly neutral in the sense that it has no effect on fitness. All mutations must have some effect, even if that effect is vanishingly small. Even Crow, has pointed out that the typical mutation is very mild. It usually has no overt effect, but it shows up as a small decrease in viability or fertility. For the past few centuries, harmful mutations have been accumulating. The decrease in viability for mutation accumulation is some, one to 2%, per generation. In other words, population geneticists recognize this very real problem. Dr. John Sanford and colleagues have actually developed a massive computer program called Mendel's Accountant. It is actually the most sophisticated evolutionary modeling system ever written. You can literally take any mutation you want 
any mutation distribution, population size, you name it. All of these parameters you can apply to these artificial species and then allow the program to run its course. You can look to natural selection. You can look to beneficial mutations. And regardless of the parameters, you find over and over again that with any realistic set of parameters, evolution does not work. Evolution fails and natural selection fails to halt genetic degeneration due to the accumulating damage from low impact deleterious mutations. Genetic degeneration is inevitable. All of these rescue devices that have been invoked and put forth over and over again by the critics, truncation selection, mutation count mechanism, synergistic epistasis, super beneficial mutations, trade-offs, you name it. They have all been looked at, they have all been analyzed, and they all fail. And the data has been published. They all have been falsified. Genetic entropy is a reality.